Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Beautiful people of God, how are you doing? Happy Sunday to you. Hello, hello, hello. I think it's about, yeah, it's two o'clock Pacific time in California. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I thought I should jump in here because I know most people are about to watch the game. And um, I just wanted to share and check in and see how you're doing. Hello, Mwihaki, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello, hello. I uh, pray that you have had a blessed week. I pray that this been, uh, you know, you're thankful. To me, I'm thankful to God that, you know, I'm even still here this Sunday. Um, I haven't, you know, last Sunday I wasn't able to come on and just share a little bit of what was going on. I had some other commitments, you know, I had, that was a, that week was a very, uh, a very long week for me i mean i had two close people to me who had lost their fathers and they both were having a memorial on sunday and and then i had a, an issue in a family you know with a family member uh, got involved in a situation where you know an accident you know you know talk about things just piling upon and it was just a week i was um feeling a little bit just way down you know you just you know things are piling one thing over the other one thing over the other and i was just tired i was really really tired and you know when you're tired you just want you you feel like you're i, I really literally felt like hope was living you know and um the bible says hope deferred makes a heart sick and I know during this time when I talk to people, I've, you know, when you call people and you share with people, hello, Naomi, when you share with people, you ask them, how are you doing? The first thing you hear is, you know, I'm tired. I am tired. I'm tired of, you know, circumstances in life. I'm tired of what's going on. I'm tired of, you know, people are just tired and they are ready to just call it quits. People are just in this last six months have just really just dragged on and um you can feel the weight of it and um and so i was feeling that i was feeling that in you know in, in my own life and i and i was wondering i wonder if i feel this way how many more people are feeling this way but they're not willing to just you know you know say it aloud you know and and just share how they're feeling and i'm i'm here to tell you that you're not alone anybody who's feeling tired of being tired tired of circumstances tired of family issues just you know piling upon you whether it's work whether it's you know health you know at the end of the day god is still on the throne and he will not allow you to be defeated you know god will never let you be defeated God has never lost any battle. When you stand on the word of God and really know that you're on the winning side, no matter what the enemy tries to throw at you, just know that, you know, you, you are still a, a, an overcomer. You are uh, more than a conqueror. You're victorious because Christ already did it for you. You know, I was reading in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, you know, the apostolic model. And I thought about, you know, Paul and what they were going through. And, um, and he wrote, it seems to me that God has appointed us apostles to be at the end of the line. We are like those on display at the end of the procession as doomed gladiators soon to be killed. And I know as believers, we feel this way. This is, Paul was writing this, but as believers, we feel as though we, you know, we are doomed, you know, gladiators. And, um, and he says, we have become a theatrical spectacle to creation both to people and to angels we are fools for christ but you are wise in christ we are frail you are powerful you're celebrated we are humiliated if you could see us now you'd find that we are hungry thirsty poorly clothed brutally beaten, uh, treated with no roof of our heads we work hard toiling with our own hands when people abuse and insult us, we respond with a blessing. Look at how he says, when people abuse and uh, insult them, 
they respond with a blessing. And I know in this season as believers, especially those who are standing on the word of God and what God has spoken, even over this nation, you look like you're foolish. You look like, you know, uh, you're humiliated. You, you, you see the things that are not of the Lord being celebrated and, you know, and, and just being exalted as though it's the good. And you as a believer, when you're standing on that word, it feels like as though like, oh my gosh, am I the only one? God, God come through, God, you know, um, come make clear of the way. And Paul was saying, this is how he was feeling. He was an apostle and those who are ministering with him, you know, some of us feel like, uh, a, a lot of people feel like they've been working so hard. They've been toiling with their hands and they're not seeing the results. They're just ready to throw in the towel. You know, remember the children of Israel when God delivered them out of Egypt, you know, God brought them out of Egypt and then he was taking them to the promised land. They had been enslaved for 400 years and now he was taking them to the promised land, you know? And um, when the journey that would have taken them, you know, 12, 14 days took 40 years because of why, number one, when the, the spies were sent to scout, the leaders, you know, when they came back, 10 of the leaders give a negative report. And when they give a negative report, they give a negative report of how they saw themselves and not how the, you know, the enemies saw them. And so when the leaders have hope deferred, when the leaders feel like, you know, there is no hope or they cannot, they cannot fight. It goes, it, it filters to the, um, to the followers as well. And we've seen in this season, so many leaders, even in ministry are quitting are quitting they're giving up they're just tired they're tired and they're they're settling and you know we have i'm praying that you know as believers we should continue to pray for our leaders we should continue to pray for those who are you know uh, whether it's spiritual uh political we should continue to pray for people that they will not give up that they will not grow weary in well-doing you know and in, 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 we should respond to those who are persecuting them with a blessing you know we should um we, we should we should also be um we should have patience when we're dealing with people especially those who need our our prayers and they need our support so he said when people abuse us and insult us we respond with a blessing and when severely persecuted we endure it with patience so I, you know, don't, don't settle for less. Don't give in just at the moment. Don't, don't give up just because you don't see what, you know, what's out there on the other side of what God has already promised. We've had so many times we're entering into a season of restoration, restoration, but don't quit. Don't, don't camp, you know, uh, and, and be in the wilderness that like the children of Israel, because of you're not seeing all you're seeing is the giants on the other side of your blessing. Do not give up do not give up do not uh, despair and i know sometimes people feel like giving up is the only option you have but i'm here to tell you we 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 only give into what we have already spoken into ourselves so as the bible says as a man thinketh so he is if you see yourself as defeated then you will be defeated and you will give up but if you start proclaiming the word of god the way it says who we are you start speaking to your spirit man you start speaking the word the, the way he says you call yourself a king even if you don't see the castle you still call yourself a king you call yourself a priest even if you're not you don't have a pulpit you don't have to have a pulpit to be a, a priest the lord calls us we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people we are kings and priests in the eyes of the lord start agreeing with the word and not agreeing with what the world is telling us stop agreeing with the world agree with the word of god agree with what god has spoken over us you know and then he says, when we are slandered incessantly, we always answer gently, ready to con reconcile. So no matter how much slander is put upon the body of Christ, do not respond to the enemy. Do not, it's foolish to respond to, uh, uh, to, to slander. Do not respond to slander. You know, speak gentle words, kind words, 
and let the uh, let the enemy can laugh at you right now and the enemy can be laughing at the church right now but we know very well that God is sitting in heaven and he's laughing at the enemy because he knows at the end of the day he is going to win I have never seen any battle fought by God that he loses God always will win over your life over our lives over every situation and circumstance so let us be pe a people who are ready to reconcile a people who are ready to answer gently and then um, even now in the world's opinion we are nothing but filth and the lowest scum that's what paul was saying to the world you know he was saying to the world you know in the world's opinion they are nothing they are just filth and lowest scum and i've seen you know the people who are not of the uh, people of the world really what they're making a mockery of the children of god the chosen vessels of god be careful as believers not to be so quick to agree with uh, what the world is saying because when you do agree with what the world is saying guess what you're giving satan legal right to be to go before the father and accuse you because you're now in his camp and he will withhold he will cause you to be withheld from your blessings so do not agree with what what the world is saying but be be one to be you know slow to answer just be one to who, who reconciles you know with with um with with people who are slandering don't don't give in into the slander don't give it into the negativity you know i want to say the other thing i saw is that one of the things i have seen even on social media that is more um it's 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 toxic and it's more contagious than the virus itself is negativity negativity on social media is so contagious it's more contagious than the virus that we're seeing right now and people are caught up with the negativity and they don't understand but by, by them being caught up with the negativity they are actually blocking their own blessings by agreeing with the accuser so don't be caught up with the negativity shut yourself with the lord and listen to what god is saying instead of what the world's opinion is saying because at the end of the day like i said god will still reign god will still rule and god's will will be done here on earth we know from the beginning how the plan started in the book of genesis and we know in the book of revelation how it will end at the end of the day the enemy will be defeated. The enemy in your life will be defeated. So I am here to just encourage you. Do not give in when you know when you're in that valley where you you can see the other side of the blessing. Do not give up. Do not give in. Do not grow weary in well doing. I pray that this will be a word that will uplift you and that you can look forward to the the week that is coming up and trust the Lord that He's going to be with you. Remember. You are more than a conqueror and you are an overcomer. Praise be to God. I, I pray shalom unto you. Thank you everybody for anyone who joined me. And I pray that this will be just a short word that will encourage you. You can listen to it again. You can share with your friends. Until next time, thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Thank you for joining. Uh, I pray shalom and shalom unto you all. God bless you. Bye.